Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. If you're listening to this program on its regularly set schedule, this is the last day of the month of November. We're about ready to step our foot into December, and already the Christmas lights are up and the advertisements are on the television, and you know the rest. Well, welcome, I guess, uh, a day ahead of time to the month of December. Now, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Titus and chapter 2. If it's possible, can you reach over right now, get your own Bible open, Titus 2. I'm going to begin to read at verse 11 here in just a moment. Now, yesterday, I looked at the prophetic event that we call the rapture of the church. And in short, believers who are part of the church age will be caught up or caught away to meet the Lord in the year. And yesterday, my focus was simply on whether or not there's going to be a rapture. Now, some good and godly, I mean good and godly Bible believers do not make any distinction really between the catching away event of the saints and Jesus' second coming to earth to set up his kingdom. Now, my goal yesterday was to show that there are distinct events. What I did not talk about yesterday was the when factor. When will this rapture, this catching away take place? You know I can't set any dates, but can we use plain scriptural passages to help us put this event in some chronological order? Well, I think we can, and to do that is my whole purpose today. Now, this is a prophecy series I'm doing. My title is this, Making Prophecy Plain. So, can we use plain, simple verses to make the timing of the rapture plain? And can we do it in less than 15 minutes? Let's see what God enables us to do. Get your Bible open to Titus, please, in chapter 2. This radio ministry, Bible Track Echoes, is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're talking about an evangelism tool, a short written presentation of the gospel that saves people from their sin, gives them the, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And since we are called to give the gospel to every person in our generation, and since we cannot do that eyeball to eyeball with everyone, we look for tools. And gospel tracts are a tremendous tool. I don't care what culture you are in. I have one of our gospel tracts here in my hand. We produce about 40 of them. At the end of the program, if you listen, my announcer will give you our information on how to contact us. If you'll take that down, give us your name and your mailing address, we will give you a free sample packet containing one, each of our English gospel tracks, and this one will be in it. It's our smallest gospel track. It is the size of a credit card, and there's good reason for that. This track is entitled, Charge It with a Question Mark, and it looks like the face of a credit card. Everybody knows what a credit card does. You don't have cash, you use your credit card, and you eventually have to pay off the account. You you do have to do that, you know. You can't just charge things and let somebody else pay it off. That's not godly at all. But this gospel track, Charge It, has the look of a credit card on the one side, but on the back side, it has the clear snippets of Bible verses that lay out the gospel, like here. It says, admit you are a sinner. It has part of Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. It has part of Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. And it does the same thing with the idea of you need to abandon all hope of salvation and your religiosity and morality. 
You must acknowledge that your sins were charged to Christ. Christ died on the cross for, on behalf of your sin, my sin, the sin of the world. The gospel is clearly laid out here in this little charge it track. Get it from us, would you please? A whole lot of people use this in a whole lot of ways, but you can't use it unless it's in your hand. You can go to our website, by the way. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. I told you how to spell tracks here a moment ago. Get the tracks from us. Do so today. Titus, please, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. The Bible says this, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Stop, please, right there. Now, verse 13 is going Going to be my focus today. Again, verse 13 begins this way, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing. Now, many a sermon has been preached that had the title, Our Blessed Hope. And as this verse states, that hope is the appearing of Christ. Now, this appearing here is a reference to the rapture of the church age saints. My goal today is to use scripture to prove that the rapture of the church age saints will take place before the time period you and I call the tribulation period. Earlier this week, we used Matthew 24 and 25. We saw there that Christ's second coming to set up his kingdom on earth happens after, happens at the end of the tribulation period. I will be focusing on one key word here in verse 13. It's that word looking, looking. First though, let me remind all of us of some key things that you, I hope you know from the book of the Revelation, the last book of the Bible. We know from Old Testament prophecies that Messiah's coming, that there will be a time called the day of the Lord. That's a familiar statement in scripture, the day of the Lord. That's a title referring to the tribulation period here on earth. In the books of Daniel and other Old Testament prophets, they tell us that the day of the Lord is focused on my people, Daniel said. That's the Jewish people. It's not focused on the church age saints. That's why in the book of the Revelation, you'll see the focus of groups like, oh, the 144,000 Jews and those two powerful Jewish witnesses. You're going to see those people. And the key frame of reference for those witnesses is to see the Jewish remnant repent. Now, God's going to use horrific judgments in those days to help turn the hearts of Jews. But yes, many Gentiles also will receive Christ during that time period. But notice again, Titus 2.13. Notice again that word looking that's there. It is a present tense verb. That means it describes what is actually happening right then and there as the Apostle Paul penned it. It describes an ongoing action. Now, Paul, as I said, who penned this book, did not say he was looking for the tribulation period. If that had to happen before this glorious appearing, then Paul would have known that the appearing was not on the immediate horizon. But let me add another verse here. It's found over in the book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 20. Let me read it for you. It says, For our conversation, that means our heavenly citizenship, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look, notice the word look, for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here again, Paul uses this look word, and guess what? Once again, it's a present tense verb. These two verses, Titus 2.13 and Philippians 3.20, are some of the key reasons that I believe in what's called the imminent appearing of Christ. That word imminent means that Jesus can appear at any time to rapture his church. He doesn't need to wait for any other events to happen. He can do it any time he wants to. But wait a minute, while I'm at it, let me give you a third reference. This one's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and the last two verses, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 says that the believers there at Thessalonica had turned to God from idols. They had been idol worshipers, and then they became followers of Christ. But then verse 10 begins this way, and I'm reading now, to wait for the Son from heaven. Listen again, to wait 
for his son from heaven. Notice the word wait that's there. And guess what? It's also a present tense verb. Now, I'm making a big deal. I know out of these three words, all in the present tense. Why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing it because God used a precise language through which to give us the New Testament. The Greek language is a very precise language. In any language, words have meaning. You know that. These three words have meaning. They pointedly, they clearly tell us that Paul and the first century saints lived with a continuous expectancy about Jesus' appearing. Now, this can't be Jesus' second coming because that comes after the tribulation, according to Matthew 24 and 25. These believers that Paul was writing to were looking steadfastly for the appearing of Jesus, and it was going to happen at any moment according to the language that they used. Any moment Christ could appear and get them away, catch them away to be with him. This truth of an imminent Any moment appearing of Jesus gave comfort to those Thessalonian saints. It gave comfort about their dead church members, that according to 1 Thessalonians 4.18. Comfort one another with these words. And that comfort was about their fellow church members who had died and some thought they had missed the Lord's return. But by the same token, if I were to turn over to James 5, verses 7 through 11, it talks about the Lord's coming there as well. There, that godly writer used the imminent return to encourage his church members and fellow believers to be patient in present trials. Why? Because Jesus will soon come. In the book of 1 John, there are two places. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, the fact that Christ was coming is used to encourage believers to not get involved in sin, live clean lives. But then in 1 John 2, verse 28, his, the return of Christ for his believers is used to urge us to be faithfully abiding in Christ. That simply means that be faithful in having a steady, intimate relationship with Jesus. Now, tell me, tell me, if you're a believer, friend, listening today, are you and I living, really are we living with an active looking for Jesus to come for us at any moment? Or Are we so earth-focused that we really have no real time to focus on eternal things that may happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye? But maybe, maybe you're listening today and you do not know Christ as Savior. Do you realize that at any moment Jesus could come for his saints and you're not one of them? And you'd be left behind to face seven years of awful time. Oh, the first three years of that tribulation period won't be so bad, but the last three are going to be awful, and you're going to go through it. It's going to be terrible. And friend, you need Christ not just to escape the tribulation. You need Christ because there's a sin stain on your soul. You put it there. You have broken God's law. You're the, you're the, the, the scoundrel for whom Christ died. I know I'm one too, but right now you can bow your head, repent of your sin, and ask Jesus to save you because he died to pay your sin. Do it right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.